morning, Katie. Well, Army General John Abizade testifying today before the Senate Armed Services Committee. He says that he is optimistic that the U.S. can stabilize Iraq, but he warns that failure will encourage our enemies. As President Bush is heading to Vietnam for the Asia-Pacific Economic Summit, his critics are sure to make comparisons between American involvement in the Vietnam War and Iraq, of course. But is that a fair comparison? Lieutenant General Tom McInerney is a Fox News military analyst. He served four tours in Vietnam from 1963 to 1969 and has been uh, involved in uh, all of the recent uh, involvements in Iraq and in the Persian Gulf as well. Lieutenant General, good to have you with us. Thank you very much, Martha. You know, tell me this. You've, you were in Vietnam, obviously, for a long time, and, and it's inevitable with the president traveling to Vietnam. We're going to get a lot of talk and a lot of comparisons between the two situations. How do you think they stack up? Well, uh, quickly, uh, Vietnam was a regional issue. To stop the spread of communism, the domino theory as we use it, that would have spread into Thailand, down to Malaysia, into Singapore. Uh, so that was the focus there. Stop the spread of communism regionally. Now, in the case of Iraq, uh, we are trying to stop the spread of Islamic extremists uh, that want to recreate the caliphate and go global. And uh, these Islamic extremists are the ones that attacked us in 9-11. The North Vietnamese never attacked the United States, New York, in 9-11, as we experienced. So that's very important for people to realize. So in their writings, they talk about a global uh, Islamic uh, Republic caliphate, as they call it, and they expect to complete this in 20 to 25 years, so there will be an Islamic flag over the White House. Now, they also talk about in their writings, putting nuclear weapons in our cities. And President Ahmadinejad of uh, Iran, just a year ago on the 26th of October, said, we will soon experience a world without the United States and the Zionists. That's why we fight in Iraq and in Afghanistan. So, you know, many people have not wanted to make that comparison with Vietnam, but it sounds like what you're saying is that all of the bad memories of what happened to, in Vietnam, if we fail in Iraq, it will be much, much worse than what happened in Vietnam. The consequences are far more severe, and that's what I don't believe the American people fully understand. Uh, the Congress doesn't fully understand that, that great uh, special that Fox had on the uh, two weeks ago with Edie Hill. Uh, and what she talked about obsession, they are very clear, the extremists are very clear in what their global intentions are and what they want to do to America. All right, uh, General McInerney, it's good to have you with us. Stay with us. Uh, we're going to do the Martha. panel, and if anybody wants to direct a question back to the general, they should feel free to do that as well. And it has been over 31 years now since North Vietnamese communists swept into Saigon, taking over the country and ending U.S. involvement in that country. Now many Americans are starting to head back there, not just as tourists, but also for business. Last week, the country won its bid to join the World Trade Organization, which is going to happen soon, and Vietnam has shown significant economic improvement with the second fastest growing economy in Asia after China, and it is tied with India. 30 years after the war, has capitalism accomplished what war could not? And might we see the same things at work someday in Iraq? Let's see what our A-list has to say about it today. Hank Scheinkoff is joining me. He's a Democratic political consultant and president of Scheinkoff Communications. Cody Willer's back. You know him well. He's the hedge fund manager and columnist for the Financial Times and the Street.com. And today's wild card, we're pleased to have back in the house with us, Dagan McDowell, who, of course, you well know, is a Fox News Channel business correspondent. She gets a free pass. She you can jump in anytime. Uh, welcome to everybody. You know, it's an interesting question to ask, and a lot of times when you, especially in the markets, when you look over periods of time, I mean, I remember when the Korean markets were doing very well, it looks like 20 to 30 years after these kinds of conflicts, you start to see a revival in that region. Dagan, what do you think about the comparisons? What do you think about how Vietnam is doing after all of these years since we, you know, by many people's accounts, lost the war? Well, Vietnam's economy is incredible in just the strides it's made in the past few years. You mentioned its growth rate, and Vietnam is doing something that all economies need to do even though it's capitalist it is opening itself to the outside world foreign businesses can come in and make investments and that opens expo Vietnam's exports to other nations but right now with Iraq with the violence and the unrest there it is hard to see into the future and that's the first thing that is the basis of any stable growing economy is safety you need safety in order to have the business development sure. and, and I, I wouldn't want to downplay the uh, the 
the crisis that Iraq is. But, you know, I do think that one of the things, we talked about Internet time and how it speeds everything up in this world, and I do think that if we can get through and punch through and actually stabilize Iraq, we do go in and we build Internet economies, we do build uh, cell phone networks, and when you are building communications networks, people are able to reach out, they're able to protect themselves better. The, the capitalism follows communications, and I do think that is where we're going to end up going. And if we can stabilize it quickly, we end up on a capitalist place, much safer much better sooner than we you know, went It's through such with an interesting Vietnam. thing to look back with, with the benefit of hindsight and the streets of Saigon mm -hmm. today are filled with commercial billboards and you know traffic is buzzing through them. What do you think Hank about the comparison and the president's visit there this week? F faulty comparison, wrong idea. If there's anybody responsible for the problems in Iraq that we are facing today it is the United States of America's failure to prosecute the war effectively. Rumsfeld should have been gone a long time ago. To compare Vietnam to what is going on in the Middle East denies history. We are probably the fourth or fifth major power in the world to have been tossed out of there in one form or another. The British tried, they're gone. And there's others that have left their, left their dead soldiers behind. So you don't ever see a positive future for the Middle East and for Iraq in, in terms of an economic experience? Look at look the history of the region. There's nothing to indicate wait a minute, that anything but you, will change. Wait a minute. One I, quick thought, Dave, and then we're going to come back. You look at Israel. That is the gold standard of yeah. thriving economies. It touches on what Cody mm -hmm. said. It is high tech. It is biotech. It is drug companies. And so it can happen with the right and policies right. and, and the right and leadership. Left, and left to their own devices, the Arabs will wipe that country off the face Oh, I don't think you can do that. When you All build right, communications gotta, networks, you, can't, you cannot so destroy them. We could do the whole stop. second half of the show on this, but we're going we're gonna to clip it there because we've got a lot of stuff to get back to. We have a great panel with us today, and we also want to tell you about the severe weather that we've been watching. It's spinning across the south. One person is dead. Scores of houses have been damaged and destroyed. There's injuries as well in Louisiana and Alabama, uh, whipped up by powerful thunderstorms that are battering that area. There's a look at Remote 43 from Control 4. Those are the skies over Birmingham. We're going to keep a close eye on that. We will be right back.